This video is brought to you by contributions to patreon.com slash Henry Kathman from viewers like you. Thank you. On the 19th of June in 1919, during the final months of World War I, Italian pilot Francesco Baracca was flying over the hills of Montello when he and his fleet were met by Austro-Hungarian forces. At the time, Baracca remained the most decorated pilot within the Italian Air Force, not only having 34 reported aerial victories, but the gold medal of military valor and three silver medals of military valor. During the ensuing battle, Baraka was accompanied by a rookie pilot named Franco Osnago when they were separated by ground fire. Despite Baraka's venerated proficiency with aircraft, a few minutes after his separation, Baraka's airfield received a report that a burning plane was falling into enemy territory. Five days later, following the Austro-Hungarian retreat, his body would be found with a single bullet in his head. Austrian soldiers would claim to have shot the pilot. Others say it was a suicide. Though official records list his death as being from the gunner of an Austrian two-seater while attacking from above and behind, leaving the pilot dead at the age of 30. There's a scene in Porco Rosso where the titular character tells a story of being similarly caught in a dogfight only to end up in some ethereal realm high above the sky. There is this haunting stillness that permeates his plane as he watches his friends and enemies float with the stillness above him, climbing higher and higher until settling in a faint white ring in the sky. Only, it is not a ring of debris or stars. It is a graveyard of airplanes, with planes of all nationalities and designs motionlessly floating in unison a strange constellation of aviation's propensity for beauty and destruction. When discussing the films of Studio Ghibli, it has almost become cliché at this point to mention the continual anti-war sentiments that can be found within these films, though oftentimes the fantastical settings of these movies often provide a degree of separations that makes these themes of war more easily discussed. Not so in Porco Rosso where unlike most films helmed by Hayao Miyazaki, we are put in the center of a very specific time and place for this war, the Adriatic Sea off the coast of Italy and Yugoslavia in the year of 1929. It is a time where the world was at peace, planes were being used for leisure and travel rather than fighting, and the biggest threat that would befall people would be the occasional sea pirate. There's a jovial energy to the beginning of Porco Rosso, where everything has this theatrical quality to its conflict. Sure, Porco takes down the pirates, but from their immediate introduction, they are declared unthreatening to the point of schoolgirls treating this hostage situation as if they were on a field trip, and will reluctantly refuse to fight when staying at the neutral territory of Gina's hotel. But despite this lack of threat, there's a pervasive dread that befalls Porco throughout the film, where everyone's carefree, joyful attitude is contrasted by the guilty, sarcastic malaise that surrounds Porco, like a cloud of fumes to a broken engine. Despite this, there is a sense of honor that he tries to retain, even as he is battered, stalked, and shot from all sides. It was said that during his career, Francesco Baracca retained a similar sense of honor and humanity. There are stories of Baracca treating his allies and enemies with the same level of compassion, often visiting victims in the hospital, placing wreaths on the graves of pilots he had killed, and acting with a sensitivity often unseen with other ace pilots. Though this seemed to act at the cost of Baracca's mental state, where he would often have trouble adjusting to civilian life and would be anxious to get back to the front lines as much as possible. Perhaps he suffered from some type of trauma that would have been left unaddressed by most of society. Maybe there was a guilt of all the pain and suffering his job required. Or maybe the world of aviation provided an escape that few others could receive at that time. 
Whatever the case, it was that world that would get him killed. While there hasn't been any confirmation of this being the case, it isn't hard to imagine that Hayao Miyazaki looked at the stories of men like Baraka as inspiration for this film. Though unlike Baraka, Porco survived his time in the war, and its effects have left him with some loss of humanity, not just from his pig-like appearance, but in his unwillingness to meaningfully engage with the world and its people. And as the story goes on, it becomes more clear that Porco cannot fly away from his problems forever, as his engine, in both a metaphorical and literal sense, is on its last legs. It is a sentiment that further expands from our protagonist as the true villain of the story emerges. By the 1930s, the Adriatic Sea had become a highly sought after territory for Mussolini's regime, not just because it would give access to a wider trade network along the sea, but it would also be indicative of Italy's national superiority. It was said that many within the regime, including Mussolini himself, detested Yugoslavia's lack of nationalistic fervor compared to Italy. Unlike Italy, Yugoslavia was a comparatively diverse society comprised of many disparate groups of different ethnicities, religions, and languages. As such, Many Slavic groups were likewise uninterested in shedding their identities for the sake of uniformity, and many dismissed Mussolini's government as, quote, a masquerade of spoiled Italian children pretending to be a nation of virile warriors. Sick burns aside, this rejection of fascism caused the regime to view Yugoslavia, and consequently the Adriatic Sea, as a group of primitives who needed to be absorbed into the might of the regime. And all throughout the movie, we can see this pressure to assimilate and reject individuality becoming an increased presence for Porco. He becomes unemployed when the regime hires their own seaplane pilots to fight off the pirates. There's an arrest made out against him, and those who don't want him dead want him to instead join the Italian Air Force. Though, if there was one thing that that previous quote had incorrect, it's that it wasn't just spoiled Italian children that were swept up in the rise of fascism. There were also soldiers. While Francesco Baracca was Italy's most venerated pilot, he was one of many legendary flying aces that fought for Italy in the Great War. Men like Silvio Scaroni, Pier Ruggero Picchio, Fulco Rufo de Calabrio, and Marziale Ceruti all had similarly colorful careers with hundreds of aerial victories between them. Though once the war was over, they had only two options. Return to a peaceful life that was mired with mass unemployment, inflation, and an indifferent government, or rejoin the violent life that promised glory, wealth, and a return to a time of greatness that was taken from Italy. While some pilots would oppose Mussolini's regime, many veterans would throw their lives into another warfield organization that would consume hundreds of thousands of lives. Oftentimes, many of these veterans fell in line because of Baraka, as the government would use his image as a symbol of nationalism, this machine of war with no compassion for his enemies solely concerned with his duty of his country. It is for that reason that when Porco goes to Milan to repair his plane, an old friend named Ferrari tries to recruit Porco as the only way he would be allowed to continue flying is in the name of Italy and fascism. And in many respects, Porco would be a great candidate for them. He too clings to this idealized version of the past, tries his best to shut down emotional expression, has rigid views about what men and women can and can't do, and most importantly, has an apathetic view on politics that could have easily been swayed to Ferrari's side were he not such a stubborn ass. Though at the same time, it's not hard to see how an ideology so rooted in violence would not have appealed to Porco's pacifist nature as it did with many anti-fascists who resisted Mussolini's regime. This same pacifism that was seen as jovial and comedic at the start of the film becomes a sign of Porco's integrity, while the rest of the world slips away. But integrity alone does not defeat fascism, nor does it save Porco from those who want to hunt him. 
While he tries his best to portray himself as this misanthropic pig, the only way he is able to save himself is through the help of others. He gets his plane fixed with the help of Fio and her family, evades the secret police with the help of Ferrari, and ultimately reconnects with his human side once he realizes that Gina loves him. Oftentimes, fascism and other authoritarian ideologies are predicated on the idea that human connection is a sign of weakness, that opening oneself up to others makes you vulnerable and useless, that empathy is the mark of foolishness. But as this film and history demonstrates, this breed of individualism can cause people to lose the very things that make us human, and life becomes much more fulfilling when we have people to share it with. In my mind, the most tragic thing about Francesco Baracca's death is not how he died five months before the armistice, not how he and countless other soldiers died hundreds of miles away from the people who loved them, not even the ways that his memory was used to prop up the same nationalistic machine that got him killed. No, the biggest tragedy is the possibility that his death might have helped save his memory as there is little doubt that he would have joined his fellow pilots in their support of Mussolini. Taking these stories of the kind, courageous, free-spirited ace pilot and exposing it for the lie that those original stories may have been telling. For as much as Mussolini's regime portrayed themselves as rugged individuals who could command all through their will, that individualism would only become despised by many. And while that regime would be addressed the only way that fascists should be addressed, we don't get to see how the characters of Porco Rosso ultimately address fascism. Just as we will never know if Porco becomes a human or if Gina and him end up together, we fail to see how these characters ultimately deal with the fallout of this ideology. But if there's one thing we do learn, it's that those who side with the fascist have nothing but betrayal and defeat waiting for them. And as for everyone else, be they pigs, pirates, pilots, and housewives, those who resist the fascist have something better waiting for them, each other. And I don't know about you, but I know what side I'd want to be on.